accept the truth because that is where my freedom lies. Father, I want to thank you because the word is settled in heaven and I bless you because of old you brought to pass every word you spoke. Under the old covenant, under the old testament, we have testimonies of the things that you said and how you brought them to pass. Solomon testified that you spoke to him and every word, every promise that God gave from the beginning that none of them was unfulfilled. And so tonight, Lord, we look up to you that you will do good to your word. Your word will stand in our lives. Your word will defend us. Your word will work for us. Your word will produce change and transformation. We thank you, our Father, because you've answered us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We're still praying. Turn your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Job chapter 11 and verse 20.
But the eyes of the wicked shall fail. And they shall not escape. And their hope shall be as a giving up of the ghosts. Chapter 11 of Jeremiah. And verse 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Chapter 32 of Jeremiah. And verse 4. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, or shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. Lift up your voice and tell the Lord tonight all the enemies that are ganged up against my life, against my family, against my business, against my destiny, attacking me from all sides. Tonight, crush them. Let none of them escape your fire. Let us pray. You are keeping quiet because you don't know that there are things working against you. Blessed Father, I want to thank you because the gang up of Satan there shall not escape tonight. You are going to strike them. Father, you have the capacity. Father, you have the power. None of them shall escape. In the name of Jesus, none of them shall escape. None of the things working against your people, blessed Father, shall escape this season. In time past, they have escaped, but this time, they all shall perish. They shall not escape. In the name of Jesus, Blessed Father, I ask you to strike them. I ask you to crush them. I ask you to smite them by your word. In the name of Jesus, everything going against the people, whatever that they, are, they be, going against the church, going against their children, going against their their plans, going against their home, going against the purpose of God for their lives. Father, tonight, I ask that you smite them. Let none of them escape. Let none of the gang up against your people. Let none of the forces and powers working against your people in any area where they are being worked against. Let none of those things escape. Let none of them escape. Let none of them escape. Lift up your voice. You want them to escape? They want to snatch your wife from you? They want to kill your children? They want to destroy your family? They want to destroy your marriage? They want your wife to remain barren? I want your destiny to be shattered. Want your husband to remain a drunkard? Want your children to become useless? You want them to escape? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. First King chapter 18, verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let none of let not one of them escape. And they took them 
And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Tonight, you are going to slaughter. You are going to go to God again and ask him to slaughter. I am not to spare. Anything that have not spared you peace, has not given you chance. Now, in Psalm 110, verse 5. Psalm 110, and verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. You are going to tell the Lord to strike tonight. If you have seen where scorpion stink a person, you will know what it means to strike. You are going to ask God to ask to strike all adversaries of your life. Whether they be spirit, whether they be spiritual, whether they be physical that they are adversary to your life, working against you, working against the people of this church, are going to tell God to strike them. In Micah chapter 5, verse 8. Micah chapter 5, verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest. The remnant of Jacob, this is talking about the Jews, the people of God, he said, among the Gentiles, in the midst of the people, they are going to be like lion. And that is exactly what is happening now. Israel in the midst of Gentiles. Israel in the midst of uh, all the hostile enemies around them. He is like lion in the midst of the rest of animals. This is being fulfilled. And the covenant that gave Israel this privilege was a covenant made by the blood of animals. But it's holding Israel till today is like a lion in the midst of the beasts. Now, as a young lion among the flock of sheep, can you imagine a young lion afraid of young sheep? No. What can the long, young lion, what does the young lion do? Who, if he goeth through, this lion, when he passes through this flock of sheep or the beast, what does he do? Both tear it down and tear it in pieces and none can deliver. That is Israel in the midst of hostile enemy. But may I tell you that is this evening the Lord gave me understanding that Israelites, they are not better than Christians. The covenant that made Israel is a lower covenant, an inferior covenant to the covenant that made Christians. The covenant of animal entered animal sacrifice led to the relationship between Abraham and God. But the covenant of the blood of Jesus sealed our relationship with God. Therefore, whatever Israelites enjoyed, we are to enjoy superior. We are to enjoy better. We are to have better. Now, Israel in the midst of uh, hostile enemies, is described as a lion. A young lion among flock of sheep. Healthy lion. Very, very young, energetic, full of strength. That 
When he goes about this lion, what he does is to tear down, to tear in pieces, and none can deliver. Among these animals, none of them can stop lion or deliver. Anyone that wants to come and deliver will also become a food. Lift up your voice and tell God that I am of the seed of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Therefore, tonight, tear down, tear in pieces whatsoever that is tearing my life down and tearing me in pieces. Blessed Father, I want to thank you because your word is settled in heaven. Entrance of your word, it gives life. Your word gives understanding. I want to bless your name because we have better covenant and better promises. Standing on this better covenant and better promises, promises. Blessed Father, you will lift up your hand against all my adversaries. You will lift up your hand against all the adversaries of this church. You will lift up your hand against whatsoever that is practicing wickedness upon my people. And you will tear them. You will tear them down you will tear them in pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. You will tear them down. You will tear them in pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power, every hand that has lifted up against your people, every satanic consultation against your people, every presentation of the pictures of your people, of the images of your people, of the names of your people, of their pictures, anything that they, has been used to represent your people before the shrine, before the altars of the wicked, before the hostile enemies. Great Father, tear them down in the name of Jesus. Bring them down in the name of Jesus. Tear them to pieces in the name of Jesus. Bring deliverance to your people that they may celebrate their relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for answer. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thy adversaries, and all thy enemies shall be cut off. L lift up your voice and tell the Lord, lift up your hand against all my adversaries. Cut them off wherever they are walking in my life. Cut them off and cut them down. Cut them off and cut them down. Cut them off and cut them down. Your adversaries shall be broken into pieces. My Father and my God, take up the adversaries, whatever be the adversaries, the gods that have become adversaries, the spirits that have become adversaries, the human beings that have become adversaries, the wishes and wizards, the kingdom that have become kingdom of our adversaries that have a connive and they are working against us and their human agents. Father, raise up your hand upon them and cut them to pieces. Cut off the enemies. Cut them off. Cut them into pieces. Shatter them dash them to pieces let all the adversaries of your people be dashed into pieces let all the adversaries of your people be broken by your rod 
Let the rod of God smite the adversaries. And let your people experience deliverance. Salvation. Healing. Joy and fulfillment. Let them see the hand of God upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we have prayed. Ask of me and I shall give thee the hidden for inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shall break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Lift up your voice. You say, ask of me, I shall give thee. Ask of me, I shall give thee. After the enemies are dashed to pieces, if you don't ask of God what you want him to do, after the enemies are brought down and demolished, if you don't ask God to do something for you, though your enemies are broken into pieces, your problems will continue. Your lack will continue. The damages they have done can continue. But when you ask God to repair, after the enemies have done damage, and now those who are damaged, you have been damaged, then you need to ask God to put to order what the enemies have damaged in your life, in your business, in your destiny, and in the church, in your home, in your marriage, in your heart. Let us pray. Blessed Father, you are will say, ask of me, and I shall give. Ask of me, and I shall give. Blessed be the Lord. The God I serve is God that can give. My father and my God. Now I am asking you. Repair the wombs that have been destroyed. Repair the home that have been destroyed. Repair the destinies that have been destroyed. Repair hopes that have been dashed to pieces. Repair homes that have been destroyed. Repair bodies that have been destroyed. Repair hearts that have been wounded. Blessed Father in glory, carry on the work of repair. I want to see you repair the lives of the people. I want you to see. I want to see you restore their hope. I want to see you restore their destiny. I want to see you rebuild their lives. I want to see you produce change in their lives. I want to see you produce change in their character. I want to see the name of God exalted. I want to see the name of God lifted up. I want to see the name of God magnified. Thank you, blessed Trinity in one God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Now lift up your voice and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. We trust in your word. Your word that says that when we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. Blessed because you have heard us. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now you may be seated. This morning, the Lord told me, listen, when I say God told me, I, 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 I plead with you to, to believe because there are instances that God showed some things to me through the Holy Spirit. He placed some things to, in my heart, in my life, in my spirit. And as I went into investigation of those things, I came, it came out to be that what the Lord was making me to know, what the Lord was uh, trying to 
bring me into the know and placing in my heart is exactly what is on ground. So I, I, I urge you to, when you hear me say, the Lord made me to know or told me, don't do because you are yet to start hearing directly from God to conclude that everybody is spiritually deaf. That you don't hear English or you don't understand English very well does not mean that there are people who do not understand English. That you don't hear Hausa does not mean that there are people who do not understand Hausa. That you are yet to hear the voice of God and uh, God speak to you and you speak to him and God making you to know some certain things and giving you designing spirit does not mean that God has not uh, developed some people to a level that they hear him and can interpret his voice and can understand what God is saying and translate it to the people. If you cannot hear God, you are, or you have not started hearing him, but somebody is hearing him, and he's telling you, this is what God said, you better accept it. When God was to deliver Israel from the captivity in Egypt, he did not speak to hundred men. It was to Moses who spoke. He said, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have come to deliver. Only Moses had that. He translated it to the people. The people believed and the journey started. When they got to Jericho, all the people in the assembly did not hear from God that the, the wall is broken. I have given you this city. But one man had it that God had given the city of Jericho to Israel. And he translated to the people and showed them steps to take in order to see this thing that was shown to him, was revealed to him, that had already happened in the spirit to become a reality. And they had it, they religiously followed the instruction and walked by faith and the wall of Jericho came down. And when Paul was writing in Hebrews chapter 11, chapter 11 concerning the process that produced the bringing down of the wall of Jericho, he said, by faith, the walls of Jericho came down. Somebody had the information that this city is given to us, translated it to the people, and urged them to accept. And the people believed. And then, and that faith translated into what happened. I urge you that when you hear us, people who have worked with God, Somebody who has spent his years and is not going to spend the remaining years in this life for any other thing other than this truth. And has spent a major part of his life in the thing he's telling you. When you hear such a person tell you a thing, please accept it. So this morning, the Lord bring to my knowing that you are adversaries, you are enemies, that they shall not escape, and that they should not be allowed to escape. They shall not escape, and they should not be what? Allowed to escape. Which means, if they must not escape, then there is part you have to play to make them not to escape. God is set to make sure that whatever has been going against your life, going against the purpose of God for your life, 
producing instability in your life, making your life to be stagnated, making you to be a person that Jesus died for, that should be full of hope. But as it is now, it looks like you have been pushed to the wall by the enemy and your hope is dying. Hope within you is dying. God is saying that the enemies shall not escape and they should not be allowed to escape. Chapter 19 of First Kings, I read verse 17 and it's verse 6. Let's read from verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, unto Elijah, go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu the son of Nimsh shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat of Ebemehola shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Somebody to take over from you. Prophet in thy room. That one will be a topic for another day. Prophet in thy room. Meaning somebody that will take over from you. You don't take over from a person you are fighting against. You don't take over from a person that has not taught you. You don't take over from a person that you have not served. Elisha served Elijah. And Elijah was instructed by God Anoint Elisha, a prophet in your room. Now verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazel, the Syria, shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. This is Talking about totality of the slaughter. No escape. Joshua chapter 8 verse 22. Your enemies shall not escape. I'm so convinced about that. God has the capacity. The testimonies are there in the Bible for your perusal. Chapter 8 of Joshua, verse 22. And the other issue out of the city against them, so that they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side, some on that side, and they smote them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. This is the AI, these people of AI, when Israel first, uh, first uh, uh, contended with them, they defeated the people of Israel. But when Israelites amended their ways, corrected errors in their lives, repented and strategized their lives, they went back to battle. And when they went back to battle, their enemies were brought into their middle. Now, on the right side, Israelites we are, we are attacking their enemies, their AI. From the left side, they were attacking. From the back, they were attacking. From the front, they were attacking. And the Bible says that happened. And no one out of those people escaped. No one was able to get himself out of that cycle. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is here. The Father is here. And Jesus is here. The blood of Jesus is a wit one of the witnesses on earth. The water is a witness. And the word is a witness. And these three are all at work here. And whatsoever has uh, mesmerized your life, 
if you agree with me that they shall not escape, then it means that God will confirm the declaration and will confirm it in your life. Yes. Chapter 14 of Exodus and verse 24. Pharaoh and his people had gathered to pursue Israel to take them back to captivity, to take them back to suffering, to take them back to sorrow, to take them back to, to labor without pay. After they had gained independence, after God has delivered them. Now, that gang up, look at what happened to that gang up of men to take Israel back to square one. Verse 24, it came to pass that in the morning wash, the Lord looked unto the hosts of the Egyptians who gathered and were pursuing Israel uh, to take them back to prison, to suffering. Through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the hosts of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let's flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea. That the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Came into the sea against Israel. Came into the sea in pursuit of Israel. There remain not so much as one of them. Which means no one escaped. I stand here tonight to declare that the hosts of the devil that have been against your life, that the, none of them shall escape tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have witnesses, we have uh, evidence and testimonies of occasions, several of them, that enemies adversaries came out against God's people and all of those people that came out perished. In the days of Joshua, there was a gang up. A number of the kings came together and they entered into, into affinity to attack Israel. And they came out and spread themselves like grasshopper. And that was in the days of uh, Jehoshaphat. And when he saw the multitude that gathered, he was terribly afraid. He went to God and made prayers. Now look at what happened. After he had prayed, he was instructed that now go and praise God. Look at what happened when they started to praise God. Verse 22. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mausia. These are the nations that gathered up against Israel, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. They were what? Smitten. And I want to say that whoever has gathered against you, whatever the gathering is, whoever that is supervising the gathering, whoever is a human agent, that all of them shall be smitten in the name of Jesus Christ. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mansia, utterly to slay and to destroy them. When they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, everyone helped to destroy another. Your enemies will rise against themselves. 
those who have ganged up against you, now those ganging up will rise up and begin to gang up against themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will help one another to destroy one another. When Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the edge and none escaped. I want you to say none escaped. They will not escape. That is what happened. That is what happened. Now, God Almighty wants us to smash every adversary. He wants us to crush every adversary. All the adversaries, those people that took David's wives, wives of David and that of his uh, subjects, his uh, men, all of them were smitten, were crushed. I want you to know that there cannot be a recovery without pursuing. There cannot be overtaken and smiting of the enemies and troops that are out against you until you are ready to pursue. You cannot trash the enemy. You cannot bring them down. Take this truth. The end time sense, which by God's grace, we happen to belong to are programmed and destined to be overcomers and to crush all their adversaries. The end time church is a church end time saints are destined to be saints, overcomers. If you read Joel chapter 2, you will see before the day of the Lord a people that will be so fierce, a people that will be so aggressive in their working for God, in their oppression, they will rise and nothing will stand before them. That is God's program. That is how God wants the end time church to be. Look at chapter 2 of Joel and let us read verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. It is near at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. Now before this day will come, a great people and a strong people will rise. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations will rise. He said a great people, a strong people, a people that, that you never had a people like them, will rise. And these people, look at what we follow. A fire devour before them. As they're going, fire is burning because they carry fire. The Old Testament worshippers, permit me use the word, they were not lucky enough. Only few individuals were carrying Holy Spirit. Only few individuals. The 70 that walked with Moses had the Holy Spirit. So the rest of the Israelites don't have Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Elijah, Elisha, David, those privileged few were people that the Holy Spirit came upon. But in the New Testament, a people at the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came upon everybody that was uh, around. So the church is a privileged people, made up of privileged people. People that every one of them has fire. Every one of them ought to have fire. 
every one of them ought to have a burning that wherever they are going fire is devouring before them because they carry fire in their bosom they carry the fire of the Holy Spirit they can stand whatsoever like uh, Elijah Elijah was able to call fire because there was the fire living inside him Holy Spirit was living inside him so he could call fire all the people that were able to, to do one exploit or the other in the Old Testament were people carrying fire. The strength that Samson exhibited was because there was the Holy Spirit upon him. The exploit that David did, the bringing down Goliath was because the fire was inside him. Now and now he said in Joel that a people a generation, a people that there, has, there is never like. Strong people, great people, a people that you will not have a people like them and after them, even to the years of many generations, will rise and carry fire. A fire devoured before them. And behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So the church is a congregation of people that as they operate in the fullness of the power of God, as they operate with understanding, nothing that crosses their way should stand. Nothing that crosses their way should escape. Nothing that comes around them should escape. If you carry fire to a thing that is combustible, fire will consume that thing. If you carry a thing that is combustible to fire, fire will also what? Consume that. That's what happened. When the people of Israel tied Samson, Samson was carrying the fire of the Holy Spirit and they carried fire, carried Samson to hand over to the enemy. What happened? He rose up and devoured the enemy. If the enemy uh, come out against him, he will devour them. If he goes against them, he will devour them. That is the church of Jesus. The church is carrier of fire. Look at verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devour the stubble. And as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his way. And they shall not break their rank. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. That's orderliness. And they that fall upon... Uh, uh, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The air shall break before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before what? His army. Think about the end time army. Think about the end time army we're talking about. Army of devourers. Army of people that nothing shall escape. For he is strong that executed this word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Because these are carrier of fire. No devil, no power of darkness, no wickedness will be able to stand them. If you are complaining, you are complaining. If the devil has pushed you to the wall, it's because you do not know who you are. It's because you do not know what belongs to you. You are in church, but 
you have refused to improve in your understanding. And so, that is the end time church for you. The end time church, the church of Jesus, is the church that will rise many saviors. Obadiah. Obadiah and read with me Read with me verse Read with me verse uh, 21 Upon Mount Zion verse 17 rather Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession and the house of Jacob shall be what? A fire and the house of Joseph, a flame. And the house of Esau, for stubble. And shall kindle them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it. When you take fire to, when you take wood to fire, that fire, as long as it continues to burn, no wood will remain. Believers are sons of Jacob and they are sons of Joseph. Unbelievers and wickedness is described as Esau. Esau, Edomites are, are used to describe wickedness. Now verse 19, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. And they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim and the field of Samaria. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The captivity of these souls of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in uh, uh, Sephrada, shall possess the cities of the south, and saviors, deliverers, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. So, we belong to a fortunate group. We belong to church of Jesus. Church that God has given authority and power to overcome, to crush, to dash into pieces. Daniel chapter 2, 34 and 35, and 44 and 45, the scribes gives us a graphic picture of the end time church, the end time sins, the exploit they will do, stone cut out without hand, that smote the terrifying image. After smiting the image, then he took it out of the way and then and took over the position and grew until he fell everywhere. That is describing you, that is describing the church of Jesus. That describing what we be. Now, after the, the, the stone had broken the terrifying image, its place was not found, which means that it didn't escape. None escape. The church is designed by God to be a crusher that whatever comes against you shouldn't escape. It is like a lion. A, a sheep going against lion. Any animal that goes against the lion will end up in lion's belly. Now look at Matthew chapter 21 42 to 44. Matthew 21:42 Jesus said unto them, "Did you never read in the scripture? Did you never re read in the scripture? Scriptures. 
The stone which the builders rejected. The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God, the church, shall be taken from you and given to the nation bringing forth the fruit thereof. Remember that when Jesus came, he first went to the Jews. They rejected. That is why the church now was given to the Gentiles. He now said, the kingdom will be taken from you. The church is a kingdom. The church of Jesus is what? A kingdom. And Jesus is the king. A kingdom that possesses unlimited authority and power. Now verse 44. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever this stone shall fall, it will grind him toward powder. That is the church. That is talking about this kingdom we belong to. It's a kingdom that you fall on the kingdom, it will break you into pieces. The kingdom falls upon you, you go against the church, you are in trouble. If the church goes against you, you are in trouble. You go against a believer that has understanding, you are in trouble. If the believer begins to go against you, you are what? In trouble. Now if you have this understanding, then you know that whatsoever has been going against you should have been in trouble. Not you being in trouble. It is an irony that the lion is now in trouble when the sheep is not in trouble and the goats around, goats around are not in trouble. But thank God for this night. The church of Jesus is the kingdom that shall stand forever and break into pieces other kingdom. That is the church. The kingdom that will stand forever. And you belong to this church. Daniel chapter 2. Let's read it. Daniel second chapter. I read 34 and 35. Thou sowest in thy your dream till a stone was cut out with our hands. We smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors, like powder. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is talking about the church. The stone that filled the whole earth. The stone that destroyed all the empires. The first empire, second, third, and fourth empire. Now the stone hit those empires and those empires crumbled and the stone filled everywhere. Verse 44. And in the days of this king shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. What kingdom? The church. Who are members of this kingdom? You and I. We shall never be destroyed. Can somebody say hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. We are operating a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Jesus said, we build my church and the gates of fear shall not prevail. You are not to be conquered. You are not supposed to be overcome by the devil. You are not supposed to be subdued. You are supposed to what? Subdue. You are supposed to overcome. You are supposed to overthrow. You are supposed to be sitting and ruling and determining what should be happening. Now he said, this kingdom shall not be, never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces. And consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. The kingdoms included. Includes kingdom of darkness. Satan has his kingdom. Kingdom of gods.
kingdom of witches and wizards, kingdom of herbalists, kingdom that is working against your life, all of them, they are to be subdued. They are to be broken in pieces. They are to be consumed. Now verse 45, as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain with our hands, and it break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. He said this dream is certain. This thing is going to happen hereafter. This thing is going to happen hereafter, which means that the breaking into pieces, the consuming kingdom should begin to what? Consume and ravage and destroy and none should escape. He said this thing is going to happen hereafter. It's not now. The time will come and there is no any other time better than this time. This is the last time. And if there is any time that this should be happening, it is this time. If there is any time that this kingdom should be overcoming and overthrowing and trashing and pushing down and breaking down and pulling down strongholds, this is the time. Unfortunately, many people that should know this. It looks like they don't know what we are talking about. However, I want to ask, who are these that should not, that should not escape or that shall not escape? What are these things we are referring to that God doesn't want them to escape? The gods that are after your life after your marriage, after your family, after your children, the gods that have kept your family in perpetual setback, sorrow and pain. Jeremiah 10 says, Say ye to the gods that have not made the heavens and earth that they should what? Perish. Before Israel came out of Egypt, there was a bombardment. God of heaven and he beated the gods of Egypt. The gods of Egypt were properly dealt with. They were crushed. Finally, the, after God has pummeled them, dealt with them, Israelites were released. So, the gods, call it a Madioha, any god, the shrines that your ancestors have served, that will not give you peace. Gods that they have made offerings to and sacrifices to and they have consulted against your family. Name it. Gods, idols, shrines, deities, all of them. They are not the world escape and should not be allowed to escape this period. Now, those who worship these gods and those that these gods are using to prepare some concussion against your life, prepare some charms against your life, they are not to escape as well. They are magicians. They are magicians that Satan was using to perform magic that made, made Pharaoh to refuse to release Israel. God's hand came upon them. He released terrible boys upon them. At a point they said, it is the finger of God. Why did they say it is the finger of God? God came heavily upon them. The hand of God was against them. God dealt with them. And none of them escaped. Everyone from A to Z of the magicians, all of them, the boy came upon them. And it was because of the boy that came upon them that they went to Moses and said, this is the finger of God. So, and I will hope you know that 
God takes pleasure in punishing whatsoever that has done you wrong. Galatians chapter 5 verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Are there spirits? Are there human agents? Whosoever he be. The Bible says, whosoever that troubles you. Anywhere you are having trouble in life, and there is a hand of anything, whether it is human being or spirit or whatsoever, God shall trouble that human being. God shall trouble that spirit. God shall trouble those gods. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God says we should not suffer the wishes to live. So, next in the list, the wishes and wizards all living around you, all operating in the office where you are working, and they are attacking you, attacking your health, attacking your family. The Bible says, suffer not the wish to live. Exodus 22 and verse 18. Balaam who tried to attack God's people using enchantment, using witchcrafting, using whatever he was using, that God sent his angel to wele him. To wele him. Yes. Balaam was on his way to do odd job. On his way to do odd job. On his way to do what? Odd job. To work against God's people. But there was an angel on assignment with a sword to prevent this man to go to curse the people. Do you know that he didn't escape it? He escaped that one because God had mercy upon him. But when he went and uh, taught the Moabites to go and corrupt the people of Israel, to go and do a word of halotry and, and pollute Israelites. God allowed the people of Israel to kill him and he was killed. So Balaam did not escape. He used occultic means. He used enchantment. He used those things that didn't work. He now give an ill advice. Whosoever that is advising people wrongly against your life Advising people, advising them, giving wrong advice. They shall not escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. Balaam did not escape. He went to curse the people. He couldn't curse the people. Later, he, because God prevented against him, he decided to teach them to corrupt Israel. After corrupting Israel, God killed him. He did not escape. So, no person, if you are in this church and your activity is to corrupt others, please move yourself out from that corrupt, that odd job. Take yourself out from that odd job because God did not spare a person who did such job before. And he cannot spare anybody doing that job presently except the person repents. Is that clear? Now, the, the next thing that we, that must not escape are the spirits that have been troubling your marriage. Some people, the trouble they are going through is that there is a spirit troubling their marriage. A spirit troubling their marriage. They shall not escape. They are keeping quiet. You wait until your marriage is collapsed. Until your house is destroyed. Some of you that you didn't do your husband anything and he sent you out. Don't you know that, that there is some spirit that entered into that man to push you out? Or those of you that are married and then and suddenly the woman just pack out. You didn't do anything. So I don't marry you again. He just entered into marriage with you. After that, she went away and said, go and I have continued with my life. She went and married another person. And said, so you two also can continue your life. Don't you know that there, there is a spirit that hired her? Now, should that spirit escape? No. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. 
I want to read verse 2. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our own gathering together unto him, that you be not so shaken in mind or be troubled neither by word. Spirit, which means spirit can trouble somebody. Nor by word, nor by letters are from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now listen to me. Somebody has is behind the somebody is behind the the query you receive in the office where you are working. Well, that letter is troubling you, and somebody engineered it. That person shall not escape. Yeah. Did you get my point? So Spirit can trouble people. That girl in Acts of Apostles chapter 16. She, at a point, she was talking and talking and her activity began to grieve the spirit of Paul. These are men of God who tell us about the way of God. She continued doing that until Paul's spirit became grieved. Paul became sorrowful. That activity caused Paul so sorrow. But it was a spirit and Paul turned to that spirit and they ordered it out. That spirit, did it escape? It did not escape. The sword of Apostle Paul. Now if there is any spirit that has troubled you, you can't sleep in the night. You lay your, you close your eye and you are pursuing you. You are running this way and running that way and then sometimes we fall out from the bed. They shall not escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Night is meant for sleep. You should sleep very well. When you are sleeping, you should be sleeping. Not that you are sleeping and you are jumping. Not that you are sleeping and you are farming. You are on the bed and you are still on, in the farm. You are on the bed and you are still walking up and down. You are on the bed and you are, driving, you are traveling in a vehicle. Until the vehicle will reach a point that, that there is no road again. And then, and then, or you find yourself inside the room. You are locked up and you are struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling and somehow you manage to come out and then you are, the whole bed is wet. Oh, you are being troubled by the spirit. All of them will come under just God's judgment. They will come under fire tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, they shall not escape. Child, they shall not escape. Whether they be human beings, whether they be spirit being, whether they are coming from the water, whether they are coming from the air, whether they are coming from the grave, whether they are living in the house, whether they are coming from outside, they shall not escape. In the name of Jesus Christ, they have frustrated your life enough. Enough is enough. He that troubled Jacob shall bear the judgment. There is that girl in Acts Mark chapter 9. That boy, that child that was brought, and the spirit will torment that child. And that child we want the spirit want to throw the child into fire and all that. And the father said, When the spirit taketh him or taketh her, he teareth him. Now did that spirit escape? No. God, Jesus, took up the tiara and what? And tore it into pieces. Is there any spirit tearing you, taking you up, causing you this, causing you that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I take up that spirit. I take up that spirit. I take up that force. I take up that power. And you are delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall not escape. We have authority. Evil spirits didn't escape the hands of Jesus. They didn't escape the hands of the apostles. And they shall not escape my hand and your hand. Evil persons equally didn't escape. When Haman rose up and plotted against Israel. He was an evil man. Did he escape? When Esther eventually brought case before the king, her husband, and the king 
say, who is this wicked man? He said, the adversary and the wicked man is who? This man, Haman. Not you, I'm not. You see where I'm pointed? He said, it's Haman. And then and the man said, what? Did that man escape? The king said, this man, he came back and saw that the man had fallen on the ground. Even begging. But he said, you want to rape my wife in my presence? And that was the, the that was the end of the, of the matter. The case, his case closed there. At that point, the king ordered that they should kill him. And uh, he didn't escape. So who is that that he can mess the wife of the king and go free? The church is the bride of the king. The church is the bride of Christ. We have been messed up enough. We have been messed up for a very long time. It is time that we understand that somebody is our husband. If Esther's husband will not accept her, his wife to be messed up, do you think that the king of kings will keep quiet and Satan will continue to mess you up? Somebody who messed up the wife of Ahasuerus died for it. And anybody messing up the church, messing up you as a member of the church, will not escape, will not survive in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you, those people, evil men that plotted against Daniel, did they escape? So why will evil men walking against you from your village, why will they escape? Why will evil men walking against you at the place of work, why will they escape? Why will evil personalities escape? No. All of those people that messed up Daniel, none of them escaped. All of them were thrown into lions then and the lion ate them all up. No one escaped. Haman and his family, no one escaped. Say no one escaped. No Even the Moabites, the Ammonites, and Mansia that came up, up against Jehoshaphat, no one escaped. The Egyptians that came out against the Israelites, no one escaped. And the Lord said, They shall not escape. They didn't escape in the Old Testament. Why would they escape in the New Testament? Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. The lion that came to attack, the lion that came to grab, the bear that came to grab one of the sheep from David, did it escape? David said, he came and uh, I followed after it. I recover the animal and he rose up against me and what? I smote it. He didn't escape. Why will they escape? That have risen against you as a pastor because you are praying for people and you are standing in for people and then and the lions, the devils are rising. No, if they rise, God will smite them. And not only God, I will smite them. Because I have the authority and you can smite them. Because you have the authority, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and upon scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is God's word. Accept it. Take it. Run with it. Believe it. Internalize it. Fight with it. Fight a good warfare with it. Because when you do, you will win. You will listen to me. What do we do to crush the enemies? What do we do to break them into pieces? We must recognize that we have authority. We have given all power. We have been given all authority. And this authority is unlimited. If you read Luke chapter 10, if you read Mark chapter 16, you see this. Recognize that 
We can run over the troop. We can jump over the wall. And we have authority to push them down. Psalm 44. Hallelujah. Pushing them down is not by power. Pushing them down is not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Psalm 44. Let me read verse 4 and 5. Verse 5. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee, we will push down. Is somebody hearing? Through thee, will we push down. We can push down. We can what? Push down. He said, through thee, we will we push down. What? Who are we to push down? Who are our enemies? The gods, the witches, the spirits, the evil persons, the evil situations. All of them are what? Our enemies. And through God, we, we, will we push down our enemy? Through thy name, will we tread them under that rise up against us? Oh, we have what it takes. In the Old Testament, when, when, when Goliath rose up against Israel, through the name of God, David went against Goliath. In the New Testament, if they rise against us, we should go against them with what? The name of Jesus. The name of God in the Old Testament was not obtained by a prize. But the name of Jesus in the New Testament was obtained. And the Bible said, a better promises, better covenant. His name and his blood speaks better things, promises us better things. And therefore, we can push them down. And we can tread them. We can match them. You see, look at what it means to tread. To tread is that you bring something and you are crushing on it. You are, you are, you are mashing on it. That's why we, we march on Satan today. We march on demons today. He said, through his name, we tread upon all day that rises, that rises against us. And so if there's any time that have risen against you, don't wait for them to rise before you start mashing them. Don't wait for them to smite before you smite, start smiting them. Amen. And so through the name of Jesus Christ, we, we bring them down. What's the next way through which we can, we can we, we, we uh, get them down and stop them? And prevent them from escaping and trash them through the sword of the spirit, through the sword of God's anointed ministers, and through the, the sword of anointed men of God. Now, Hazel was anointed, his sword was to slay. Jehu was anointed, his sword also was to slay. Elisha was anointed. And those who escaped Hazel, then Jehu will be there to slaughter. And those who escaped Jehu, Elisha will be there to slaughter. He, he was anointed to slaughter. There was anointing to make them not escape. And therefore tonight, by this anointing, all the things that have disturbed your life, spirits disturb you from your village. Kill your father, kill your mother. And they are telling you that these spirits are set to close your father's compound. There are many compounds that have been closed. And they are telling you, bring this contribution, bring that contribution, so that uh, we can go and appease uh, God. I want to stand here tonight. Or God that said you get married but you will not have a child. Or that you will not even marry at all, at all. You will never, never excel. 
or covenant that your fathers, forefathers made and they have made it and they made a vow of poverty. They want to have plenty of children but there will be no food. That's why you can come to your father's compound and your father's compound is like a, a host, one local government. But out of this local government you have, there is nobody that can afford to send any of his child even to secondary school. Because a covenant is working against the family. Tonight, by this anointing I am carrying, that covenant is brought to naught. In the name of Jesus Christ, is rendered obsolete, is put out of circulation, is made void and null, null and void. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are men that God has bestowed with spiritual authority, spiritual capacity that can release the oppressed, that can tear down the stronghold of every of enemy that none should escape. Moses was one of such people. Moses stood up that day. He looked behind, he saw the enemies coming. He turned to the people, he said, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. And then God came and said, stretch your hand. Only stretch your hand this way. And he stretched his hand that way. And what happened? The enemies perished. He stretched hand this way. And what happened? Enemies perish. Because he was anointed for that office. When you connect with such people, when you have faith in their demonstration, if I stretch my hand towards you, and you believe that the only stretching this hand towards you, we do a work in your life. That is a connection. All of these things we are talking cannot work if there is no faith. Faith is, uh, is uh, what faith is to receiving from God is like what dollar is trying to become in the world. If you travel out of Nigeria and you carry Naira, you carry Naira, 200,000 Naira, and you get to Europe, you have no any other money, be ready that you will die of hunger. Because nobody will accept it from you. Do you hear what I say? If you bring it, what? What? This is what? If immigration, if immigration has stopped you and, the, and the, they say they want to check your bag and they see Naira, it's like they saw. You know, in those days that they used to have labor for bread. That is what Naira is to. No, but let it be that you are carrying what? Dollar. Anywhere you go into in the world, you will get use dollar to get what? That local currency. And then that will, you can now use. But carry Naira, even Ghana. I don't know whether they are, before Naira, they used to accept Naira in Ghana. I don't know whether they are accepting Naira again in Ghana. I don't know. That is the situation. So, but faith, faith is, uh, is, is, is a global currency. Faith is spiritual global what? Currency. You use. You cannot receive healing without faith. You cannot receive miracle without faith. You cannot put down the enemy without faith. You cannot, the name of Jesus cannot work without faith. The blood of Jesus cannot work without faith. Prayer cannot work without faith. Prophecy cannot work without faith. So faith is at the center. If there is no faith, all of these things will fail. That is why faith should be gotten. So, Isaiah 49 verse 9. We soon rise to pray. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 9 that thou mayest say to the prisoners somebody 
has been authorized to say to the prisoners. Look at verse 8. Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time have I had thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people. I will give thee for what? A covenant of the people to establish the edge, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. God is talking about men. And now says the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring about Jacob. To bring again Jacob to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. My God shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. To raise up. Servant to raise up. Anointed to raise up. And so when you connect with men that have had a long walk with God, don't have problem with any man that has a, a living relationship with God. Don't have physical problem and don't have problem in your mind. Because once there is problem in the mind, what has happened? You have blocked yourself. You have cut off yourself from the flow. He said, I will give you as a light to the Gentiles that I may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, this same man, he said that I may say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness. Show yourself. They shall feed in the waves. And their pastors shall be in all high places. Well, somebody has to say it. Somebody is given to say it. Somebody is given to declare it. And when that person says it, and you believe it, because you're in fellowship with that person, because your heart is not offended with that person. Because you are flowing in the same page, in the same chapter with this person. You find out that the adversaries that are against you, they will be crushed. Praise God. Psalm 89 and verse 19. Psalm 89, verse 19. Then thou speakest in vision to the Holy One and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of this, the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. Have I anointed him? With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exalt upon him. Now the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face. And plague them that hate him. I will beat down all his enemies. When you are following somebody, when you are under the ministration of somebody that God said, I will beat his enemy down. And you are in fellowship with that person. As he's speaking, the power of God will bring your enemies down. Don't disconnect with people who have, who, have, who have a part to play to help your destiny. Don't disconnect from people that have a part to play to in fixing your life. Don't disconnect from people that have a part to play in subduing your enemies. Don't be, don't, don't, don't disconnect from a people that when the devil hears their voice, when the devil hears their voice, they are pursuing you in the dream, and then and that person will come in a dream. The Lord, the Spirit of God will take that person because He knows that you are connected to that person and that you believe in the word of that person, and that person will come and say, Stop. I ask the people that are pursuing you before I open my eye and close all of you vanish. If you disconnect with that person, when the pursuer will begin to pursue you in the dream, who is God going to present that will stand in to 
to speak for you. Sometimes a number of people will come to me and say, well, I was in a dream and something was pushing me. I was running and running and running and running and at, at a point I became tired and you will appear. It's not me that appeared because I'm not spirit. But God will bring somebody that he is his servant. Somebody that is a minister to you. Somebody that stands in the gap for you. Somebody that is speaking on your behalf to God. Somebody that has uh, made sacrifice and denied everything on your behalf. And then and that person, God will bring that person. And God will speak through that person. Because the spirit pursuing you and power pursuing you, know that this person has authority over your life. And therefore, when, you, when that person speaks, you see those spirits bow and give way. They'll bow and surrender. There are some that the enemies will surrender to on your behalf. Praise God. Read Micah with me. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. The enemies bow. The enemies are crushed. As we exercise our authority as saints. Every one of us as a child of God, we have authority. Every child of God has authority. Psalm 149 says, This honor have all the saints. Micah chapter 5. That is honor all the saints have. And that honor is to bring Satan to book. I read verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. In the midst of many people. As a lion among the beasts of the forest. Remnant of, the, of uh, Jacob. The remnant of Jacob. Believers. This is uh, talking about Jacob, but we are believers. He said they shall be among the people as a lion among the beasts of the forest. The king of the forest. As a young lion among the flock of sheep. Who if he get through, if he go through, both tread it down, tear it in pieces, and none can deliver. So if you are a believer, you have such authority and power. As we put into use the whole armor of God, the whole weapon of Christian warfare. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty. When you say blood of Jesus, don't underestimate what will happen. Have faith in the blood. Have faith in the name. Because the name is given that at the mention of this name every knee shall what? Bow. If I throw this thing up, what will happen? If I throw this thing up, what will happen? It comes down. Why is it coming down? There is a force, a gravitational force. But there is a place you will go if we move out from here and go into space and you throw it, it will not come down. It will, it will stand. Because there, there is no gravitational pull. But here, there is a law. Now, at the mention of the name of Jesus, what will happen? Every knee shall bow. If I bring egg now, do I need to use all my force to drop it here before it breaks? What do I need to do? Just, I just open my hand. And then as it gets to the ground, what happens? It breaks. So, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. In my name, you cast out devil. Whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. It is the name we do it. It is the blood we do it. It is not the shouting. Faith in the blood. Faith in the word. Faith in the name. Does the work. So let's believe in God's provision. Let us not 
underestimate what we have because what we have can handle what is going against us. What God has given, listen to me, if there is any other thing that we would have needed in order to overcome the devil, God would have provided them. Everything he has provided is sufficient for us to handle the devil. It's sufficient to, for us to handle poverty. It's sufficient for us to handle whatever that is troubling you. If there is a need for more, God would have done it. Samuel asks Saul. Okay, not Saul. I think it was David. Or I think it was a David that Nathan was asking. The house of your master, God has given to you. If there is any other thing you would have, you needed, He would have also what given it to you. If there is anything we need for salvation, for deliverance, for healing, for setting us free, for putting the enemy to shame and out, God would have provided it. Jesus provided His blood, provided His name, provided His word, provided His spirit. All of these. They are sufficient. It's enough. Sufficient for the battle. Sufficient to get the devil to kick the devil on the buttock. You see what I say? To do what? To kick him. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I give unto you power to tread upon serpent. Who is the serpent? There is the old serpent who is called the devil. The dragon. I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and upon scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. All. All. Not some. All. Anywhere it comes up, the power is there. You don't need to feel it. You don't need to feel it. All you need to do is to know it. And begin to exercise it. When you begin to use it and believe in what you are using, you will see results. They shall not escape. <laughs> through prayer, through declaration of faith, they shall not escape. They that are against us shall not escape. If we pray, if we make declaration, if we believe in what is declared, through praise, we set things that are against us, against themselves, till they destroy themselves. Therefore, we must pray. Therefore, we must praise. Therefore, we must use the name of Jesus. Therefore, we must uh, stand on what God has said. Let's read this finally. Isaiah chapter 41. I want to read from verse 10. Fear thou not. Tell your neighbor, fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be what? Ashamed. And confounded, there shall be as what? Nothing. I want you to shout, there shall be as nothing. All they that are against me shall be as nothing. All things that are against me shall be as nothing. All they that are against my family shall be as nothing. All they 
there, whether they be spirit, whether they be human being, whatever they are, they shall be as nothing. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with me shall perish. And they that strive with thee. Anywhere there is a strife. They shall perish. In the name of Jesus. Thou shalt seek them. And shall not find them. Because they have not. They can't escape. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contend with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For the Lord your God will hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Rise on your feet. Say, God will help me. God will stand by me. All they that contend against me. All they that are contend with me. They shall perish. They shall be as a turn of naught. I will look for them. I can't find them. Because their place is no more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those that are fighting me through spiritual warfare. They that are fighting me in the spirit. They that are fighting me through occultic means. Whatever means that they are fighting me with. They shall perish. They shall not escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. They shall not escape because they shall be subdued. They shall be conquered. They shall be vanquished. They shall be subdued. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and begin to bless God. Begin to bless God because your confession is holding. Masu Garabato. Blessed Father, we thank you. Blessed Father, we glorify your name. Blessed Father, we honor you. All they that are against your people, my Father and my God, whether they be spirit, whether they be human being, whether they be animate objects or inanimate objects, whether they be gods or whether they be goddesses, whether they be spirits living in the water, spirits that are living in the land, whoever they are, whether they are using occultic manipulations, my Father and my God, all of them, they shall perish. I use the blood of Jesus against them. I fight them with the blood of Jesus. I oppose them with the blood of Jesus. My Father and my God, they shall perish. They shall be as a turn of naught. Their place shall not be found. For thou art God, they shall be subdued. And I subdue them in the name of Jesus. I subdue them with the blood of Jesus. I subdue them with the authority of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. I overcome them by the name of Jesus. I overthrow them by the name of Jesus. I overturn them by the name of Jesus. I stop them by the name of Jesus. I stop them. I push them down. I tread upon them. I march upon them. My Father and my God, they shall not escape. They shall not escape. They shall not escape that are working against our businessmen. They shall not escape that are working against our children. They shall not escape that are working against our homes. They shall not escape that are working against us at the place of work. They shall not escape that are using occultic means to work against us. They shall not escape that are consulting shamas and enchanters and diviners against us. My Father and my God, they shall not escape that are carrying juju for us. They shall not escape that are taking our teachers, our name, to the gods. They shall not escape that are taking our money. 
monies we give them to native doctors, they shall not escape that have gone to consult blessed father, how at least native doctors to fight us, use your courtesy, my father and my God, they shall not escape, whether they be women, whether they be men, whether they be authority, whoever they are, blessed father, whosoever that troubled this church, whosoever that troubled the women, whosoever that troubled the men, whosoever that troubled the boys and girls, whether they be spirit, blessed father, shall be troubled. Trouble them that trouble your people. Trouble them that trouble us. Fight against them that are fighting against us. My God and my Father, trash them that are trashing us. Fear our spirits that sometimes will come upon us, come upon our children, and then and tear them. Let them be torn to pieces. Let them be judged by God. Let the blood of Jesus go against them. We go against them by the blood of Jesus. We go against them with the name of Jesus. We go against them with the authority of the word of God. They shall not escape. They shall not escape. They shall not escape that they are walking against your life. They shall not escape that they are walking against your peace. They shall not escape that they are trying to confuse your little boys, little girls. They shall not escape that they are trying to confuse, trying to introduce sin to your children. They shall not escape. My father and my God, whether they be teachers in school, whoever they are, they are trying to introduce our young ones to sin. Blessed Father, they shall not escape. Your hand will be against them. Eternal Father in heaven, Dagon did not escape. Dagon did not escape. Dagon did not escape. Any God, any shrine, any coven, any groove, any kingdom, any chamber that our names have been mentioned, any register, occultic register, any number where our names have been fixed, any bottle where our pictures have been put in and then uncork and cup covered, blessed Father, any list of those to die that people have put our names or those to remain a failure, Father, they shall not escape in the name of Jesus. They shall not escape in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus and I command deliverance of your people in the name of Jesus. I command open door for your people in the name of Jesus. I command favor for your people in the name of Jesus. Whether they be spirits, whether they be gods, whether they be what? The churches who have gone before and they are making some enchantment. Blessed Father, burning candle and doing one thing or the other. Whether they be people that collected our clothes, collected our dresses, collected our underwears, my Father, and my God collected our own the wears and use it to go and make medicine. I use it to go and work against us. My father, whosoever that have tied the womb of any woman, have tied the womb of any woman, and have mesmerized any man in this church, blessed father, they shall be messed up by God. Blessed father, mess them up. Remember, they shall not escape. And they should not be allowed to escape. Let none of them escape. They shall not escape. And they should not be allowed to escape. They shall not escape. And they should not be allowed to escape. They shall not escape. And they should not be allowed to escape. Don't allow them to escape. Don't allow them to escape. Don't allow them to escape. Gather them. And call on God to send his fire call on God to send this fire. Why should there be delay in your wife's conception? Why should your wife be barren? Why should not, why should members of your family, why should they be languishing in poverty? Why should your children be, be non-entities? Why should you give birth to stupid children? Why should you give birth to stubborn and stupid children? Why should things not be working for you? Lift up your voice. And let God judge them. Let God bring them to book. Why should you be suffering at your age now? Why should things be hard up? Why, in spite of your going to school, 
nothing is working your certificate is not working why should they tie your certificate all those people that tie your certificate they shall not escape why should your father not be doing well why should for many many years your hands are tied many years now things are down nothing is working in your life your life is not working business is not working you are borrowing you are eating from the old you have opportunity to succeed near su success syndrome near success syndrome anytime something good is about to come some woman will appear in the dream want to sleep with you anytime something good is coming some woman will come out in a dream. Let that woman not escape tonight. Let that spirit not escape tonight. Anytime good thing will come your way, they will bring foul. Anytime good thing is coming your way, you will see blood. Anytime you are about to conceive, you will see blood. Anytime you are about to conceive, someone will come and sleep with you in a dream. And then and the thing will flush out. Ah, should that man escape this night? Should that evil spirit escape? Oh yes, he cannot escape. The blood of Jesus is against them. The word of God is against them. The constitution of the church is against them. The oppression is illegal. By the blood of Jesus, I stop them. Oh yes, the seed of the righteous shall prosper. Why are you not prospering? Why should you be poor? Why should you be failure? Why should your hands be down? Lift up your voice and call upon God. Let the Lord answer by fire. Answer you. The Lord answer by fire. Answer you. The Lord answer by fire. Answer you. Let the Lord of judgment answer you. Let the consuming fire consume them. We receive a kingdom. A kingdom that will destroy other kingdom. Yes. You belong to the kingdom. A kingdom that will swallow other kingdom. A kingdom that will destroy other kingdom. A kingdom that will put out all the kingdom. Use your authority. Use your authority. Use your authority. Engage your mouth. Engage the service of your mouth. Declare yourself free. Declare yourself elevated. Put the enemy to run. Put them to flight. Speak the word. 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 Judge them. You can judge. You have right to declare judgment. You have right to declare judgment. Oh yes, I give unto you power. Power to tread upon serpents. Power to stand over the powers of the enemy. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Anything that is hurt to you, it's violating the word of God that says nothing shall by any means. Anything that is hurting you, anything that is hurting you, is violating the word of God that says nothing shall by any means hurt you. Anything that is hurting you is violating the word of God. Rise up against the things violating the word of God. Rise up against the things that are kicking against your head. Rise up against whatsoever that is working against your life and life of your children and levels of your hand. Whatever you set your hand upon shall prosper. That is the word of God. Whatever I do it shall prosper. Whatever I do it shall prosper. Whatever I do it shall prosper. Whatever is hindering your prosperity shall not escape. I shall not escape. Whatever is hindering your prosperity shall not escape. Whatever is spoiling your life and spoiling the level of your hand and work of your hand shall not escape. Whatever is rising against your children your grandchildren against the labor of your hand shall not escape. Whatever is standing against the marriage of your children, your boys, your girls, shall not stand in the name of Jesus. I go against them with the blood of Jesus. I go against the host of the devil with the blood of Jesus. Not any other argument, but I have the blood of Jesus. 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 I release the blood of Jesus. I stand here tonight. I release you with the blood of Jesus. I send the blood of Jesus to wherever your destiny is tied. Wherever the confusion of your children are coming from. Wherever your confusion of your children are coming from. I send the blood of Jesus against the forces confusing your children. Against the forces attacking your home. Against the forces attacking your marriage. Against the forces attacking your business. Against the forces attacking the church. Yes, Lord. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. I release the stone. Cut off with our hand. Let the stone grind them to powder. 
Let the stone break them into pieces. And the stone is Jesus. I raise the name of Jesus. I go against everything that has been going against your life. In the name of Jesus. Anything going against your prayer. Going against your prayer. Going against your fasting. Going against your future. Threatening your life. Threatening the future of your children. Threatening your marriage. Threatening your life. Threatening the life of your children. Threatening the destiny of your children. I come against all of them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let the blood of Jesus take over. Let the blood of Jesus take over. Let the blood of Jesus take over. Let the name of Jesus take over. Let the blood of Jesus take over, take over, take over. Blood of Jesus take over. Spirit of God take over. Word of God take over. Take over our life. Take over their homes. Take over their destiny. Take over everything. Thank you. 
Lord. We are looking on to the Lord. We are looking on to the Lord. For your blessings upon us. For your healing upon us. We are waiting upon the God of our Lord Jesus. God of the watchman. We righteousness upon the church. Many come with your heart so downcast, Lord. Many 
us. If you are there with your testimonies, do not hold it. Kindly go to the back at this door here and get your testimonies registered. And if you have anything at all you want God to do for you, please pen it down and give it to the ushers. And as the church of God, we pray on your behalf. Those issues will be settled in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am a wonder, yes. I am a great wonder to my generation, to my generation. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am a wonder, yes. I am a great wonder to my generation, to my generation. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am a wonder, yes. I am a great wonder to my generation. Oh 
finishes what he do. Hurry up now, now, now. Watch me until he finishes what he do. Hurry up now, now, now. Until he finishes what he do. Oh yes, hurry up now, now, now. Wait until he finishes what he do. Oh yes, hurry up now, now, now. Wait until he finishes what he do. She's walking on the I will not be abandoned. Watch me not till he finishes walking on the I will not be abandoned. Till he finishes walking on Oh! 